Hey, what's up? John Sanmez from simpleprogrammer.com. I have a question here about uh, about how to measure your programming skills, and I'm going to talk a little bit about actually not how to measure your programming skills uh, because the the question really is is I think it's more valuable to talk about uh, what you should do rather than you know some arbitrary metric. I can give you I could give you some way some idea of how to measure your programming skills, but is that really going to help you? So, so let, let, me, let me get into the question, then you, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about here. So this question is from Tony, and he says, I have a question that you might, might be a good YouTube video topic. Okay. Um, I'm a college student in computer science, and I love programming. What I have a problem with, though, is how to objectively measure my skills. I have never worked for a software company, nor have, have any programmer friends I could ask for an objective evaluation. Thus, I'm pretty stuck, and I don't know if I'm overestimating or underestimating myself. As of projects experience, I have managed to write a remote administration application for desktop uh, computers similar to TeamViewer and C Sharp and C, and I've also written a couple of game applications for Android systems and Java. When I compare myself to my college peers, I seem to be greatly ahead of them in all aspects of programming and computer science, but I don't know if this could be considered a legit evaluation as I might just be playing in the minor league of a small town soccer team <laughs> and think I'm good just because I don't have serious competition. What are some important milestones I need to reach in order to be considered a good programmer? Uh, I want to know where I stand compared to other professional programmers in order to be able to determine if I should go get a job or just keep studying and preparing myself. So, so here's the deal with this. This is why I think that you know I can give you some some milestones. You know, as far as what milestones I would give you, you're already there. You've been able to build an application on your own, right? You've a fairly complex application. You're above your peers, like you said in 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 your studies in computer science, but. You know, there's never going to be a milestone. You're never going to hit this point where where you're just there, where where you're where you're the best programmer. You know, and you can objectively evaluate yourself. I, th I think it's important to take a personal inventory on things, right? Is to to be honest with yourself, right? I did a video uh, a, a while back on on being honest with yourself, on being essentially looking in the mirror. Okay, and that's important, right? Don't so don't get me wrong. In, in that regard, you need to be brutally honest with yourself and look in the mirror and decide, you know, what. You know, objectively what what's wrong what, what can you fix what can you improve but here's the thing as far as it's much more likely that in your case in a lot of people's cases the, the problem the biggest problem that they're gonna have is that they don't dive in that they they keep on spending all this time preparing and trying to get ready but you know what you're not gonna know that you're ready until until you you step into the ring until you get that that punch in the face and then you're gonna know you're not ready or you're gonna know what to what to do so you use the example of that maybe you're playing on a small town soccer team and you think you're you think you're the shit because you've you've you can you can conquer it but you're not sure because you've never had any real competition so what, what should you do in that case right I mean I mean, here, here's here's kind of your scenarios, right? You can stay in that small town soccer league, and you can keep on practicing and getting better because you're you're not ready for the real competition yet. And you'll keep on training against people that are at your same skill level or or worse, everyone's worse than you, right? And so you're gonna maybe make small improvements, or you could go out and you could join the big leagues. You could go out and play against some professional soccer players, right? If you've got the opportunity to do it, and and maybe get creamed for a while. But if you do get creamed for a while, you're going to get better. You're going to figure out what you need to do. So don't prepare. Don't get you know. I'm not saying just jump into things without any kind of preparation at all, right? But as soon as you feel that you you have an inkling of readiness, as soon as you feel like you might be able to do it, and sometimes even before that, right? Jump right in. And, and start failing, start messing up, see what happens. Go get your job, right? Go, go get into the big leagues and get the real training. That, that's where you're really, really going to improve, right? I, I just give you one example, and then I'll wrap this up. So back in the day, some of you know that I used to play Magic the Gathering 
card game. I actually played it sort of on the professional circuit for, for a little bit. But for a long period of time, I was I was regionally pretty good. Like I lived in in Boise, Idaho, and I would dominate all of the draft, all the tournaments. Right, I'd come in first on on the pre-releases, and then the you know they would have the state championships and all that. Okay, but I but when I would go up to play at the pro level, I would get creamed. Okay, then I moved to New Jersey, and in New Jersey there was this group of like four or five guys that just sort. It was a real. It was New Jersey, New York area. Okay, and the competition was fierce. It was these were the guys that were winning in the you know the top tier, and I started playing against those guys in drafts in the in the regular weekly, play, and I improved drastically, ridiculously, way more just by playing against those harder opponents all the time. So. I didn't realize that. I, th I thought that that I could just improve just doing what I was doing and, and dominating the field where I was. But you got to always seek out a, a harder challenge. So, again, I'm not, I'm not directly answering your question because I don't think those milestones are important. I think there's a bigger la life lesson here, which is essentially this: when you're in this situation, just go. Always do things before you're ready. You're never going to be ready. You're never going to be prepared. Go out there and try to face, you know, if you can get slammed down, that's great. You're going to grow and you're going to learn more from that. Always seek the hardest challenge that you can and try to try to conquer that challenge. So go out there. Go get a job right now. Go try and see what happens. What's the worst that could happen, right? You're going to learn very quickly what you need to know and then, and then you'll figure it out, right? Don't Just sitting there and preparing so many people. And the reason why I, I emphasize this so much is because I know, because I get the emails, so many of you out there right now, what you do is you sit there and you wait. You're trying to prepare, 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 and, and trying to be ready. Uh, but you're never gonna you're never gonna think you're good enough. You're never ready. You just need to go out there and take action, right? It's you're gonna waste your life waiting to be ready, reading, watching videos, doing all kinds of stuff instead of actually taking action. I'm not saying don't learn. I'm not saying don't practice. I'm not saying don't hone your skills. But go out there and take action at the same exact time. You want to learn how to do real estate investment, right? Check out my playlist on real estate investment. So many people I talk to that do that. They or that they want to do that. They never ever buy a house because they're so analytical. They're so calculating and crunching the data and crunching the numbers that they never actually take action. And what happens? Five years goes by, ten years go by, and they've wasted all this time. So don't waste your time. Go, go forward. Take action. When I wanted to run a half marathon, you know what I did? I signed up and I ran it the next day, and I I made it. I mean, I've been been training, but I didn't ask myself, am I really prepared for this? Like maybe I should plan it out six months in advance. No, I just signed up and. I did it, right? And I could have failed, you know, big deal. I would have learned something. I would have learned I need to train harder and I would have learned how I need to train. All right, that's that's a kind of long long video here. If you if you like this video, uh, definitely click the subscribe button below and you'll get more of my videos I do about 2 to 3 a day and I'll talk to you next time. Take care and take action.